Shout out to leadership. And so in this module, uh, we're going to cover self-evaluation, evaluation from mentors, and goal setting. So before we get started, um, just want you to, to sit and do a very basic evaluation. Rate yourself on a scale one to five uh, for the following questions. So one, I can not do it or rarely do it um, up to five. Uh, I can do it very well or I, or I always do it. Um, and so the first question would be, I can set effective goals. I know my strengths and weaknesses as an official. I know mentors in my area who can help me improve my skills. I feel confident in my ability to be a mentor for less experienced officials in my area. Now let's talk a little bit about self-evaluation. Why is self-evaluation important for officials? What is the relationship between self-evaluation and other evaluation? So evaluation from an officiating coach or a mentor or, or a supervisor. And what are the basic areas of self-evaluation? Why is self-evaluation important for officials? Um, so we all know officiating is very solitary exercise. Uh, we work with different partners every night, different arenas, different circumstances. We're constantly receiving feedback, uh, but most of that's from players and team officials, uh, which may be biased. And even when we do receive uh, coaching and mentorship, uh, it's not always from the same person. Um, not like having a coach on a hockey team where you have that same person working with you all season. What is the relationship between self-evaluation and other evaluations? So again, evaluations from an officiating coach or, or a mentor. We get coaching. Uh, for many different people in different situations. Some officiating coaches have different styles, different expectations and ways of delivering feedback that may not align with your own expectations. It's important that you have a strong understanding of your own abilities so that you can integrate feedback from others. So looking at the self-evaluation and, and something that all officials are encouraged to do, um, is a little analysis of, of that. So internal, so the things that uh, you have control over, uh, what are maybe some of the strengths um, that you do well as an official? And then maybe the weaknesses or, or the areas of improvement, what you could do better as an official. So some examples could be um, our conditioning, skating, rule knowledge, um, procedures, face-off, Things like that are, are internal um, that an official themselves has control over. Looking at external things that you may uh, be able to influence but are not directly under your control. And so um, some opportunities, what's available to you to take advantage of, to improve, and, and think about some of the threats, what might prevent you from uh, improving. So, you know, for opportunities, there's chances to attend camps, reach out uh, to other officials or other official coaches for feedback, uh, use the fitness app, join in the skating sessions, watching other officials, opportunities to um, learn and, and improve yourself. Some threats may be simple things like uh, location for, for where you live for opportunities in certain leagues or your schedule or, or availability or the assignments you receive. Um, possibly you receive more assignments um, as a lines person instead of a referee and you want to uh, have goals um, that are directly referee driven. Um, so some of those things may be uh, a threat to, to the development and things that need to be brought up and, and reviewed. Now take a second to think of those areas of self-evaluation. As we'll ask you in your post uh, knowledge check after this module, 
to list some of those internal and external strengths and areas of improvement and opportunities and threats uh, to help you and to help us um, with the officiating development program understand some of the, the goals and the evaluation you have for yourself. With that, we will move on to goal setting. The objective of self-evaluation is to better understand your own abilities. The purpose of self-evaluation is to guide your improvement, which leads us to goal setting. So the question, why is goal setting important? Goal setting is important because it allows you to track your progress. You can say, I want to improve my positioning, but that doesn't tell you how you'll know when you've accomplished that goal. So we have to break some of these things down and there's three types of goals, which are outcome, performance, and process goals. When we're talking outcome goals, uh, an outcome goal is what you achieve. It's measurable, observable achievement. Outcome goals are good because they motivate us. They want us to get us out of bed in the morning, but they are often outside of our control. They're not what we should be thinking about on game day because they may be distractions. So again, I asked just uh, to think of some examples of what may be an outcome goal um, in officiating. And that might be you know, wanting to work certain leagues, SJHL, WHL, NHL, working the gold medal game or, or the league final game or the tournament final game. Um, wanting to work new leagues or working a, a certain number of games. Those might be something that's an outcome goal that at, at the end of the season, you can either measure that and say, yes, I did that, or no, I wasn't able to do that. Moving on to performance goals. Performance goals focus on achieving a successful performance in a game. Achieving your performance goals would allow you to say, I had a good game today. These goals are flexible because they are primarily within our control. So again, some examples of performance goals, maybe just taking control of scrums or having good sight lines across the blue line as the play enters the zone or at the net. Um, things that you can really break down after a game and say, you know what, I did that um, and, I, and I achieved that performance goal. Next is our process goals. Process goal is the most basic unit, unit of goal setting. They are the actions that contribute to a good performance. Process goals are what we should be thinking about on game day because they are 100% within our control. And so again, breaking down the, the process goals, maybe that's skating backwards all the way into the end zone or showing presence around the net or, or taking control of scrums, staying square uh, with our body to the sight lines. Um, beating the play, anticipating the play, and having good gap control. Those are process goals that may change from game to game. Um, something that, again, is 100% within our control. So again, I want you just to take some time to think about some goals you could set for yourself. Um, these could be listed in your knowledge check at the end of this, end of this module as well. So again, we'd be looking for outcome goals, the big accomplishment that may not be within your control, the performance goal, what allows you to say, I had a good game, the process goal, the small steps that lead to a successful performance. Let's go back to the concept of self versus other evaluation. An officiating coach may ask you what you're trying to improve upon or what areas you need help. If you're constantly self-evaluating, you can better answer those questions, which will improve the quality of the feedback you receive and may be more directed to the area you are looking for help with. Sometimes you will receive feedback that you didn't expect. If you're constantly self-evaluating, you will be better equipped to ask the question and why you received that feedback. Was it one game, one bad game, or is it a larger issue? Is it something that's kind of commonly been brought up in, in some of your evaluations? That is the self-leadership module. Please review the knowledge check. We will move on to the next section.